Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I want to talk to you about the brand new reveal of the PlayStation 5's controller called the DualSense. So that's the first thing to know is that it's called the DualSense, it's not going to be called the DualShock 5 like I think everyone was expecting, although it's still got that abbreviation going, you can still call it the DS, maybe even the DS5, you know, DualSense. DualShock, same thing, kind of. So this was just kind of dropped randomly on the PS blog, on all their social medias and stuff like that, and a random Tuesday, no fanfare or whatever, but it's exploded, you know, everyone's talking about it, retweets, you know. So let's just go over what they say in the blog. So they say, we've reached an exciting milestone with the PS5 as we're starting to ship our new controllers in its final design to developers who are implementing its unique features into their games. But first we wanted everyone in the PlayStation community to get a first look at the DualSense wireless controller and hear our vision for how the new controller will captivate more of your senses as you interact with the virtual worlds in PS5 games. The features of DualSense, along with PS5's Tempest 3D audio tech, will deliver a new feeling of immersion to players. So here's a look at the controller itself. As you can see, it looks completely different to what we have now. Uh, here's what we have now, as you know, I'm sure. You've got this two-tone look, which I think is the most striking thing. You've got these lights going down the sides of the touchpad. The touchpad has been expanded upon. You know, the home button is different. It's actually the logo of the PS, you know, the PlayStation symbol itself. The face buttons especially, they've lost their color, if you know what I mean. They seem to be either a grey color now, or they're maybe see-through. Maybe there's a light behind that that's not showing up in this picture. You can see just the overall shape of it has changed a bit and at the very bottom there is a microphone and there's a mute button built in which is a nice touch I think but we'll read more about it in a sec. So they say here we had a great opportunity with PS5 to innovate by offering game creators the ability to explore how they can heighten that feeling of immersion through our new controller which is why we adopted haptic feedback which adds a variety of powerful sensations you'll feel when you play such as the slow grittiness of driving a car through mud. That's one example. We also incorporated adaptive triggers into the L2 and R2 buttons of DualSense so you can truly feel the tension of your actions like when drawing a bow to shoes an arrow. Sounds cool. Now of course the more stuff that they put into these controllers the bigger the controllers can be and they talk a bit about this here how they worked to design this to make it as small as they can. So they say with adaptive triggers we had to consider how the components would fit into the hardware without giving us a bulky feeling. The designers were then able to draw the lines of how the exterior of the controller would look and feel with the challenge of making the controller feel smaller than it really looks. So in doing so, they say we changed the angle of the hand triggers and they also made some subtle changes to the grips. So, you know, these are kind of the things that maybe we won't really know how they impact us until we have the controller in our hands. We know how it feels ourselves. So that's kind of a wait and see kind of a thing. So next he talks about the battery and the weight. He says, we also took thoughtful consideration into ways to maintain a strong battery life for DualSense's rechargeable battery and to lessen the weight of the controller as much as possible as new features were added. He briefly teases this new create button, which is replacing the share button. We don't know why the name has been changed or what difference the create button will have with the share button. They're kind of just saying, we'll let you know more about that closer to launch. So we're going to wait and see on that one. But I'm pretty excited about that as someone who makes content with their PlayStation. The share button was so, so handy. It was the best thing about the controller, in my opinion, the DualShock 4. So I can't wait to see what the create button does. And of course, they've also got the built-in microphone. This was, we've seen this, we've talked about this in patents and stuff like that in the past. And here we have confirmation there is a built-in microphone. Now those patents did suggest that the PS5 would have a built-in like AI helper that you would talk to. So like, let's say Google Assistant or Alexa or something like that. So this kind of lends weight to that too. So there's a good chance that you'll be talking to your PlayStation through the microphone in the controller, like asking for help with certain things or searching things or Googling things or whatever. Talks briefly about colors, which of course that was like super striking to see the colors, but you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if you ask me. In all, we went through several concepts and hundreds of mock-ups over the last few years before we settled on this final design. We want gamers to feel like the controller is an extension of themselves when they're playing, so much so that they forget that it's even in their hands. So immersion is the name of the game here, which is, you know, obviously ideal. That's something you want, especially as a viewer gamer, you know, immersion, that's key. And then there's a brief message from Jim Ryan, who's the president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, but he doesn't really say anything new about us. Uh, but let's look back on the controller and see if the DualSense can tell us anything about the viewer. Well, first of all, if you get a look at the top here, we're missing the light bar from the top. That is gone. Instead, the lights have been moved to the front and they appear to be just cosmetic only, which I assume that means they won't be too bright. There is just, just a charging port up at the top now. So that does kind of hint at the fact that PlayStation Virtual Reality 2 will not be using light tracking. 
which is something we've all had our fingers crossed hoping for. Light tracking is easily uh, the biggest Achilles heel that we currently have with the PSVR 1 that we're dealing with right now. There's so many things that can interfere with the tracking of the PlayStation camera. If there's a reflection behind you, if that if you're just slightly out of view with the lights or something like that, so many things can go wrong. So hopefully we're looking at something like inside out tracking or something like that for the next generation. That could be a huge improvement. Now keep in mind, if we do get a PSVR 2, which we probably will, we're also probably going to get new move controllers too. Like move controllers 2.0. They might not even be called moves, they'll be called something else, I'm sure. So maybe some games will work with this, but maybe... Or maybe Sony want to take the approach of, no, you're only going to use moves when it comes to PSVR 2 games. I don't know. We have to wait and see. But with talk of, like, the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedbacks, you know, that sounds great. That sounds perfect for virtual reality. I'm going to leave it there. You can let me know in the comments what you think of this controller. I'm seeing a whole host of different reactions to this already. Some people think it looks cool. Some people think it looks, you know, goof. I've seen one person say it looks pretentious, which I think, you know, is a pretty interesting comment for a controller, you know. Uh, but just let me know what you think below. But before I end this video, let me give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. This time, for sure. I forgot last time. I'm sorry about that. Won't happen again. And let me also give a shout out to Crum, Tradition, Pete Hawkins, and Columbus Thomas the third for their support on the top tier over on Patreon. If you want to be a Patreon supporter too, the link will be in the description below. If not, don't worry about it. No big deal. I still appreciate likes, subscribes, shares. All that good stuff. Also, a big shout out to Decepticon for letting me use his music in all my videos. Go check him out over on Decepticon.com and go listen to him on Spotify or wherever it is you listen to your music. You're probably going to find him. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.